Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right. Welcome to Storytellers. Um, this is actually a continuation of something that I started yesterday on Patreon. Uh, but uh, I thought that this was actually a good video to um, share on the main channel as well. And I wanted to say thank you. Um, I was watching a channel yesterday and they have almost a half a million subscribers. And at the end of the video, he was... He was thanking everyone that watches his videos, and, and uh, one thing he said that caught my attention was his view time, and he said that he had extraordinary numbers uh, with his, his length of engagement on his videos, and I was right there with his numbers, and I was really flattered, because I always thought, I was like, oh man, people only watch my, my videos for, for X amount of minutes, and um, it seemed low to me based on the length of my videos, but but in fact... Um, I'm really at the high end of, of engagement. So thank you guys for sticking through the videos. So anyway, yeah, um, I, I uh, do a tier on my um, Patreon where I give uh, like lessons and they could be inking or penciling. And I have a penciler who was interested in a few different pencilers, but one was Joe Matarera. And so uh, I, I broke out some Joe's work and I was dissecting it and I thought, well, he would be a great artist to do a storyteller's on. So anyway, we're going to start with issue three and um, really, really beautiful page right here. I mean, it's so uh, simple, but, but, uh, oh, look, special thanks to Richard Friend. What, what? Um, uh, yeah, so, um, the, the black and white has just the moon and the silhouette of the ship, but it, it really is a nice, uh, beat of the story. I think it's, it's kind of quiet um you know there's mystery involved where's the ship going it seems fairly peaceful the birds sort of give an indication of, of maybe a sense of calm so let's see how this all transpires um okay we're probably inside the ship this looks like the bottom um got a little bit of sky kind of around it which is pretty cool they're looking in the containment vessel and there's hammerhead sharks with multiple eyes. They're actually very, very cool looking. It's a great design for um, a creature. Um, Red Monica really, really started to come into her own at this point. Um, the first appearances of her, she was ha handled a little bit differently than she ultimately was. I think Joe saw uh, initially just kind of a fun sort of bombshell character. And then he realized that fans really liked her and and so he he started drawing her i think in a more interesting way this guy's great <clears throat> and joe will frame things with a lot of black he uses some really really nice simple sh lighting and shadows on his characters um and uh he's not f afraid to kind of create these dra dramatic shots with like quite a bit more uh darkness around him um and uh you know the colors by liquid are phenomenal It's a really fun book. This is really nice. Great pose here. It's got some nice perspective going on. Again, pretty simple lighting on this, but but you know, it works. It frames things nicely. You know exactly where to look. He's got this really interesting shape, taking you to Red Monica's face, and uh, he sweeps you through. And you know, we talk about this, like circles can always kind of lead the eye. I don't know what it is. They can make you stop. If you put like a circle in the middle of a panel, it'll definitely frame something. Um, but, but juxtapose and sort of sprinkle throughout, they, they tend to make you follow them and sort of move with them. Nice introduction of this character. Ryan De Soya, Del Soya. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm trying to figure out, does she? Oh, I guess when they're leaving the cell, those guys are. Oh, those must have been the guards. Like I said sometimes when I shoot these videos, I miss little things. Us oh, is nice. So 
when I was talking about this book on Patreon, one thing I was saying is that when, when Joe chose to do a fantasy book at this time, it might not seem like that unusual of a choice now looking back, but, but the environment that this book was created in was post image boom. In fact, sales had dropped significantly at that point. Um, you could argue that sales dropped almost 90% from what they were. Um, you figure in like 92, 93 books were selling a million to 5 million, 6 million copies. Uh, a high selling book at this point was doing maybe a hundred thousand to 200,000 copies. Uh, and this was actually, if I'm not mistaken, the worst selling of all the three original cliffhanger books. The fourth being, um, steampunk, which Chris and I did about a year later. Uh, but, but him choosing to do a fantasy book was very, very risky. And ultimately, when it initially came out, it really wasn't, uh, it, it didn't hit like, um, you know, a more superhero or, or it's just, it wasn't, it was, a, a, it could be seen as an odd choice, but, but I, I love the idea personally. I'm a huge fan of fantasy. Um, and I don't really consider this that extreme fantasy. It's, it's, it's a nice blend of superhero and, and fantasy and adventure. I think it's fun, you know? That's really cool. Joe's got big, big, chunky shapes. It's just, his work is always really enjoyable. I always like this shot. It's got a little bit of a Meta Baron feel. I, I don't know if it's intentional. I, I mean, I saw the kind of Mobius designs on that last page. Um, these guys, it's a little bit inspired by that sort of stuff. So he probably, at some point, maybe as a kid or something, was into, like, Heavy Metal Magazine. I know he, he said that he was into Dungeons and & Dragons and... Uh, so there's a lot of cross pollination. It's a great, great panel right there. Um, with influences, like uh, I talk about, like influence families and chains and stuff like that. And uh, you can sometimes get a, an influence that looks like it's coming from someone that's maybe a third, a third generation uh, version of it. This is really nice, man. The colors are great on this. A little suggestion of stuff exploding, the fire on his leg. This is really, really cool. Joe's stuff is actually quite detailed too it may not seem like it sometimes because of the cartoony style but all these little shapes and stuff like that actually are time consuming um to to do so although it seems open and maybe not as rendered as some stuff you see these could take a while i always like this page Malware scanning my computer for viruses. <laughs> That's really cool. These characters are great. This is a nice shot. It's... But uh, if you're a fan of Joe Matarera, when uh, did you uh, first discover Joe's work? I would be curious to know. For me, it was actually Battle Chasers. I I was seeing the work being done on the book, and it got me really, really excited about Joe's stuff. I went back and looked at some of his X-Men work and grabbed some of those back issues, and uh, yeah, I like this better because the, just the content was more cool to me. My cat is like dying to get in the office. It can't believe that I'm doing YouTube without her. I don't know if you can hear it. She's at the door like bawling. Oh, I love this sequence. Now, this, we'll see if this is still Tom. Tom McWeenie um, ended up hurting his, well, I, I'm not 100% what happened, but he started having hand problems, but but I believe it was, it was a back or neck injury that was affecting his hands. But at some point he had to actually bail out and, and uh, he was replaced, which was a shame because he really, really was phenomenal on this book. The, the inks were great. <laughs> really cool shot here. Nice silhouette. Takes you right out. He's got some nice sweeping lines. If you if you kind of look like like he sort of takes you right to here, but this kind of sweeps around this way. This sweeps around this way, and then ultimately he sweeps you back up. Get a lot of these kind of nice sweeping shapes, and this pulls you down. 
This is really good, actually, the hair and the, the foot coming down. I don't I don't remember this little, sh these two panels right here. They're really, really cool. It's a long panel. Yep, really nice. Really nice. Are you a fan of the video game? Do you play any of the, the Joe Mad related uh, games? I'd be curious to know. I would. I don't have time to play video games. That's really cool. Calabretto is actually he's, he's got a lot. There's a lot of detail on him for for uh, having such big shapes. But you really got to keep it balanced and in perspective when you draw it. Oh, the new Horizons poster. Ooh, that's cool. He always got really great artists to do like covers and pinups for that book. I, I never really was able to get many of the comics, but all the single images I've ever seen of that are pretty nice. Oh yeah, this is a really like, it's like a classic, classic piece. Very iconic. It appears we have something in common. That's right. And what that is, is we're going to look at issue four in a second. Stormwatch. <gasps> oh my God. It's old ads are funny. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, issue four. Okay, so this is... Oh, we're only on issue four. Okay. It felt like we were further into the story. This is going to be good. I haven't seen this comic in so long. Oh, my God. This is great. Those are long lines. On 11 by 17 board, those are some really, really long feathering lines. Oh, yeah. All right, this one had the four covers. Oh, you know... They, I think that they all did that for the issue four. All the cliffhanger books had four covers for issue four. Oh yeah, this is good. See, Joe's storytelling actually, uh, to me, that was I had said that on Patreon was was it really does improve as he gets more familiar with the characters and drew more of these pages. I think he really started to settle in with this style, um, and and the elements that that to, to to make it good but yeah that's really really cool this is cool face is awesome actually i'm gonna watch i i pulled out all my disney dvds and blu-rays and all that i'm gonna go through and watch a lot of the early disney movies for some for some inspirato I've been wanting to see Pinocchio of all things. Is is a kid? There was a scene in that movie that really freaked me out. It's like I don't even know if it's in the movie. It's like I think they go underwater and like things are drowning. I can't even remember. I'm curious to see if it's in the movie or if I had a Viewmaster. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. It was like this little. It looked like binoculars, but you could put like slides into it. And flip through the slides. And I had some Disney ones. I had the Fantasia one with the uh, the water and the broom and like Mickey. And so my first exposure to that was was in that, which I think is from Fantasia. Uh, and um, yeah, I just remember this really creepy scene with what I think was a donkey and Pinocchio. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It's funny how your kid brain remembers like random stuff like that and. Uh, it like has an impact on you. It was horrifying. The idea of, of being locked in a cage and drowning was weird. That's really cool. So we'll do one more of these and then I actually gotta get to work. Um, I'm on a tight deadline. Oh and for Blaster Kid, for people curious, um I'm I'm working on the final script for it right now. So I haven't been drawing the last like, couple of days, but but uh I, I originally had an outline for the story, and as I was working on it, I just realized that I didn't want to um, create problems for myself, um, and, and, and things that, that the reader could poke holes through. It, it, it's like, to just have a cool story, and, and to go, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. I needed to really make sure that the world building was, was, was accurate, and, and that the world made sense, and the... The motivation made sense. The the characters 
behaviors made sense. So there was some more work to be done, which is why, why how I discovered that guy's YouTube channel that with the movie reviews. Because um, uh, some, some really interesting insight when you find someone who um, critiques stuff like that, stories, well, you can learn a lot from it. You don't have to agree with all of the observations, but but it still it makes you aware of like oh okay yeah watch out for that you don't want to make that mistake and and have people read it and go like oh come on dude like seriously this was so obvious or what whatever it is but that's great too man this actually I like it better in black and white this looks really nice in color but the black and white of this piece is actually even cooler I don't I I remember that more it's cute kind of remember this that was back when pencilers would actually let inkers ink covers wah, wah. <laughs> that's really cool oh how funny This just looks familiar to me. I think he did a shot where he leaped uh, in maybe a different um, thing that I had seen in it the last day or two. I, I might have even... I flipped through. I've got my hardcover right here of the book, so... I, I, I have been looking at that. This little guy is really cool. <laughs> That's really good, too. Man, the colors add so much form to this face. Like, Joe Joe really creates like a lot of depth with like his, his um, structure here, but the color really... Uh, plays it up nicely. This too is chunky. Chunky. So what have you all been looking at? Oh, and by the, by the way, you know, look, you can always suggest stuff. Oh, I love this piece. Um, you, you know, feel free to suggest in the comment section below uh, titles that you'd like to see and, and artists that you would like to see. I try to get to them all um, I mean, I, I do have a sense of what I think will, will probably appeal to the most people. I know en Enrique Bar Barrecchia has been suggested a lot, um, and uh, Jorge Safino and, and some other ones. I was just having trouble finding my books of those, um, and sometimes you can't always find digital files. Winter World is good, though, but yeah, if you have any suggestions, let me know. I, I... <laughs> Oh, Finch. Finchy Finch. All right, so we'll do one more. Oh, Joe, try it out. Oh, it was like, oh, because there's four pieces inside of it. All right, so this is issue five. I think this is Tom's last issue. Could be wrong, but we'll see. Well, anyway, we're, we're just going to do this one day. Oh, yeah, this is a great issue. Gold and gear. Bam. Go, Calibretto, go. I can't remember this character's name. I don't know who that is. It's been a while. It's really cool. <laughs> Dude, that guy is so huge. It's funny. Man, that's crazy. This is nice, too. Really, really cool. Colors are very, very saturated on this. But, you know, what ends up happening is when this stuff prints, if you actually look at the comics, I had I had said yesterday there was a page that didn't look familiar to me, and, and there was a lot of, like, these bright purples and stuff like that. And then when I saw the comic, and there was some green, like like a, a really kind of dark green that really popped, like, on the digital file. Um, but when I saw the original board, I went, oh, okay, the colors are there. But this stuff settles in on the paper quite a bit, and sometimes it doesn't look as uh, saturated. So really good professional colors know how to um, sort of anticipate uh, how stuff will print, but it can seem really almost unfamiliar when you see it in, in a, a digital form because these, these are clearly not scanned from the comics. So this probably originally was, was sourced from like Comixology or something along like that. This is great. He creates a really good balance for a front front side shot with the horns and stuff like that like he's he's pretty good at it uh like if you did a mirror image of this and flipped it it probably would look pretty solid 
This is great too. These are both really, really good. Now this is making me want to see Aladdin. <laughs> that guy's so cool. Nice little shot. Yeah, and kind of like Super Fun Sunday, a lot, of, a lot of times, like I think sometimes people wonder like why my YouTube channel is a lot of looking at other people's art. I never get an opportunity to do this on my own. So I figure if, if doing a YouTube video of me looking at Battle Chasers gets me to look at it, then it's it's worth doing. And honestly, I get, I, I'm not a big fan of just constantly talking about myself on, <laughs> on YouTube or like, I don't know, it's weird. Like I... I so much of social media is like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, this is something I did, this is, I'm here, I'm, I'm eating this, whatever it is. I, I, I'm, I can't focus on myself that much, so I'd rather just focus on other people's stuff at times. This is great, man, the colors on this are so killer. It's interesting, too, because, so, this is sort of the core color of the, of the sphere. I know it's a planet, but, but, uh. He, he's got this nice light source here, so it's hitting all the planes on these sides of the meteor um, craters. And then what you see is you see how it, it hits the rim, but it's starting to hit the inside rim. It hits the rim, a little bit of the inside rim, and then this is bounce light. So the light that's coming from here is hitting something down here and reflecting back up there. Boom. Oh yeah, this guy's cool. Man, look at that. It's so big. All <laughs> these old ads, it's funny. Just very distinct hands. It, it, it works though. It's they're they're real cool looking and Solid planes and and uh, yeah they 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 pop good. This is great, man. Chunky anatomy, and it's a little it gets a little ambiguous, but it, it still works. Still looks good, but yeah, right in here, a little this, but you know, he lands the jump. It's it sells it good enough. This is really cool, man. I right, know you want in. This is really cool. <laughs> he gets the, like, dude, that's so wild. Oh my god. If I was sketching that, I would think it was too crazy. Like, I'd go, oh man, that's putting the head up really, really high. It works. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's turn it into a movie, man. Oh yeah, this is such a dope shot. Oh man, little leg all kinked up. And this, and this. Man, that is great. He's got the head, too. The head is turning towards us a little bit. This isn't a side view. Um, you can see a little bit of this side of the um, the mouth, the face, and the eyes. Like, it, like if you drew through, the forehead is kind of... He's, he's turning it around just the tiniest bit. It's really good because she's pushing on it. So he's buckling and turning. And that he's playing it up here. It's really, really good. It's quite subtle, but, man, it looks sick. This is really good. Oh, yeah, this. This is close to the test page that I did. I, if, if it's not in the story, then I'll tell the story later. But I almost was going to ink Joe on Battle Chasers when Tom left. It's a long story, though. But timing is everything in this business. And uh, I wasn't aware that he was. Yeah, it's not in this book, so it's all right. Okay, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you for your engagement levels on my videos. I really appreciate it. If you made it to the end of this, you, you're you part of the solution. Not solution, but um, w how I'm getting the, the nice um, view times. It's really, really appreciated. So, all right, have a great day. If you can, smash the like and uh, share this somewhere. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Have a great day.